Hello, hello everybody, this is TipTopMTG, here today with another Magic the Gathering Arena video. In today's video, we are going to be doing something a little bit more casual, and we are going to be simply playing some MTG Arena. Today, I'll be playing a Tovalar Historic Brawl deck. So, I'm really just going to be playing a couple games with this, kind of talking through it, just having some fun. If you want to see the deck list, it is in the description down below. It is nothing super impressive. Uh, it's pretty much just every werewolf I could put, some tribal support, and, you know, some of those things that fill up a historic brawl deck. Uh, and, yeah, it ends up being a pretty fun time, so let's just get into this. So... Let's see what happens here. Uh, I've played a bunch of games with this, and so far it's been really fun. It's nothing like insanely powerful, and if you run up against a deck that's very controlling, it will lose. So just be aware of that, but honestly, I play this game for fun, not to win it necessarily, and obviously winning is fun. Um, but, you know, as long as I have good games, I'm good with that. Um, this kind of concerns me in terms of just mono black is often very controlly in nature, but we'll have to see what this looks like. Uh, in terms of this hand, we really don't have anything till three and it's not even a creature. Um, here we have some ramp, so I think this is going to be a lot better for us. Uh, Shadow Spear seems really good, giving us that lifelink mixed with the ability to boost up with Tovalar. It's going to be a little bit of, I guess, a greedy play, but I think, uh, we just don't need more lands. Um, so turn two, still nothing from him, making me think he might be waiting for removal, but we shall see. Uh, Paradise Druid is very nice in the fact that it can dodge a lot of that. Yeah, Henny. Um, Spikefield Hazard is actually pretty good, just for the fact that it can kind of deal with Yehenny a little bit. So, either way, we are going to... Yeah, we're going to play Arlen here, and we are going to just minus three to create two green wolves. Um, should be able to block Yehenny. If they kill something of mine, then I don't really have a good block, but I still will to make sure that Arlen doesn't die. If this is a rat colony deck, that'll be actually kind of fun, uh, or at least a little bit more interesting, I should say. Let's see what he does here. Um, so what's going to happen is he's going to sacrifice a rat colony. It's fine. Not a huge deal. So that means we basically traded a rat for a wolf, and then he gets bigger, which now it's a little bit more of a problem, but I'm still not worried about it. So, now we can cast things as though they had flash. Now, why is that good? Well, that's because we can basically turn it to night on our turn at all times, and then just play things at instant speed. Also, with night pack ambusher, it's pretty good as well. So, I'm just... Pretty much just gonna hold up. I didn't cast any spells. It turns to night. Arlen becomes Arlen the Moon's Fury. Uh, and we shall see what happens. So, 4 1. Um, let's see. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to Night Pack Ambusher. Which will block. Um, is this the way I want to do it? Does it really matter? No, not really. I think this will be fine. That's what I figured would happen. So now it's a 4-4. Four, four. Um, then what we can do is we can actually, I believe this should, oh, that's me being really dumb. That was a major misplay. This is not how this card worked because it says if it would die, but it has indestructible. That's me being stupid. Uh, yeah, that was really stupid. But whatever, you, you make mistakes, it happens. Um, again, this is a very casual video. I'm not really worried about it. I just kind of want to sit down and play, and I decided, you know what? Let's let's kind of see what we can do here. So let's equip this to this. 
and then that'll give it trample, which means we can kind of force him to take out one of his rat colonies. And then this will deal six. Um, and then we can plus one. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, this is a very, I don't want to say cut and dry game, but like, this is fun stuff. Also, the Shadow Spear means we can get rid of Yeheni's Indestructible now. Um, so we'll see if he realizes that, that I can tap Paradise Druid. He's probably going to name Rat. See what happens. Nothing, so I think he does realize that. We are going to plus one once again, which then lets us basically turn it to night. Um, hmm. I really don't like that I could be just losing my guy, and we do get a 2-2 green wolf because we didn't cast any spells. So I think it's just worth it, especially because it enters with the counter. So this it just seems really good to not cast anything on my turn. Which is really rare, and that's why I really like Arlen in this deck. It's not because, oh, it turns into a werewolf, yada yada, has werewolf synergy. I just really like it because of that instant speed. And honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I should add that Vivian that lets you cast creatures at instant speed with the, her passive. I feel like that actually would be really good. I don't know why it's not in the deck. Um, so that's an, an upgrade recommendation. Either way, let's see what kind of happens here. Because if he attacks with his six twos, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to block one of them with the four four. I don't think I'd flash anything in. Um, okay. So we are going to flash in Tovalar. And then I'm going to, I'm going to also flash in this, um, this Kessig Naturalist, which then I've cast two spells, but it's not my turn. So it doesn't matter. So as long as he didn't cast two spells, and also Tovalar will just make it nighttime again. Um, so everything just stays on its nighttime side pretty much forever now. Um, we can either add some mana with Arlen or turn it into a 5-5. Five five. Looking at the attack, you know, this thing becomes a 5-4 with haste for three mana. Um, that's much better rate than Tovalar is giving things with trample um yeah and then we can not do aggressive stuff we'll do aggressive we'll be aggressive next turn but for this turn i'm just going to play nyx lotus which will pump up the amount of mana we can generate pretty significantly i mean that's three um which i don't believe that because i mean oh wait 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 does this not count the backside of stuff? That would make sense. Yeah, because we're on the backside, Nick Lo Nick's Lotus is not actually doing as much as it normally would, but... Yeah. Um, just because just it's only counting Paradise Druid and Night Pack Amateur. Now, on this turn, it, it has six, and so I wonder what we'll be able to do if we can mess around with that at all. I don't think we will be able to, but we shall see. Bunch of seven twos. I mean, technically... If he swung, it would basically be just a big old bloodbath, but I don't think he would do that. Okay, so, yep, 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 yep. Let's see. Okay, so, we are pretty much just going to see what we can kill. And yeah, I think that's what I want to do. So he's going to sacrifice that guy to give him indestructible. And then I'm going to just make that lose indestructible. And so now he has to choose between Yeheni and Rat Colony. He chooses Yeheni to die. I think we end up with the much stronger board state and really not much else. I mean, I don't really think that was great for him. Uh, we also have this return to nature, which will simply 
allow us to destroy his vanquisher's banner um which i'm just gonna not do now i'll do it at instant speed on his turn so i can get the night pack ambusher trigger uh we're also going to be drawing two cards here oh i should have pumped that up a little oh it's on the wrong side i'm being dumb um yeah so we created the creatures meaning we can't cast this at instant speed i'll still throw this down uh, and then we will get ourselves a, a good creature, and then that turns it to night time. Oh, I really wanted to do that. Okay, cool. Um, we are going to destroy Vanquisher's Banner, and we win. So yeah, that's kind of how the game, the, the deck just wants to win. It just wants to have good creatures, have favorable fights by having cheaper creatures that can be more expensive at night, and then our commander lets it almost always be night, which actually didn't really happen that game. That game was very much an Arlen-led game, where the fact that we were able to cast things at instant speed meant that we could just set it to night whenever we want with very little consequence, and so I think that is definitely a way you can build this deck um, with a couple things that let you cast creatures at instant speed. So I think Arlen, pretty good. Uh, you could even maybe have Arlen run the deck um but i do think tovalar is the better answer there so this is a little bit more of an iffy hand we technically have one werewolf here uh with faceless agent this is a card i'm just testing out see if i like it i mean it's a three mana two one that just says draw a card on it but it counts as a werewolf and honestly there aren't that many werewolves we'll get more with crimson vow but i did have to use some shape shifters there are some weird things in here. Nixplume Ancients in here because we're, we're we want a decent amount of mana, um, and so that'll let us get up to it. But then also, if we have that out plus Tovalar, it often means a win because we can just turn that mana into pure damage. Um, we have a really slow hand, but I I don't know if that'll be a problem. I love Sunstreak Phoenix in this deck. You basically can just keep getting it back whenever you want because it'll often turn daytime on their turn and then Tovalar will always turn it to nighttime or you maybe have even set it to daytime and then, you know, stuff like that. So pretty good. They are off to a pretty good start at four mana on turn two um, or and it'll be five mana on turn three, assuming they have a land uh, and we, we have a whole two lands and nothing else. I am going to play a replication ring next turn. Unless they have some 1-1 one, one with an on-hit ability, in which case I'll play Bloodline Pretender. Um, this is really just here so that my werewolf count is high. I mean, that's not an on-hit ability, so I'm not too worried about it. This, to me, seems very much like a sacrifice-based deck. I'm going to play Replication Ring and get this going first, because once that duplicates, you have all the mana you need, especially if you get a Nyx Bloom Ancient out. We also have Wild Shape, so I think next turn we will be playing this Tovalar and then having the Wild Shape as protection, whether it's needing more toughness or hexproof or whatever it ends up needing. Uh, although, I don't know, they did just hover over my Replication Ring. I really hope we're not getting that destroyed. Okay, um, well, we can hope for a land. And see what we get. All right, cool. The issue is we have to spend the one green, the only green we have, on the, the him. So I think instead I'm just going to do the smart thing and play Sunstreak Phoenix, who feels pretty safe to block any of their things, because if it does die, we'll be able to get it back pretty quickly. Um, yeah. So we shall see. Um, they are thinking, apparently, or reading, I don't want to say a newer card, because I feel like Midnight Hunt has been out for a pretty long time now, um, yeah, I mean, when your commander is literally Resurrection and Board Wipe, that's exactly what I expect, but that's fine, um, we are hoping for a land, or something like this, um, I do wish, for Historic Brawl's sake, we had more two-drop mana rocks. Yes, I'm in green, and I could run land ramp. Um, and I do run a decent amount. I just don't know where it is in this deck, or in this hand. Um, yeah. Also, he's running out of stuff. His graveyard has one creature for his commander to hit. So, like, I'm not really worried about it. He's actually using his removal as creatures, so that tells me that this last card is removal. Um... So what we're going to do, we're going to play Tovalar here, 
leave open the one mana, the one green mana for a wild shape, which actually is one of my favorite cards. I don't know why. It just, yes, I can give things hexproof, but also, like, that reach and trample can come in clutch. I mean, the ability to become a 1-5 spider seems pretty good, too. The reach, the trample, the hexproof, I love all of that. Um, so it just seems very versatile. Um, if he decides to... No. How about you don't... Oh, I have no idea what I just clicked. That was with reach. How about this thing becomes a 1-3 turtle with hexproof, and you don't steal it? Yeah. That That's great. Thank you. Not to be taxed with anything else, it's just dying for no reason, unless he attacks with all of them, in which case it's dying for a whole one health of damage. Okay, so he's going to board wipe. Is what this tells me. And now, he, I mean, he only has to board wipe for two now instead of three, so he can save his murderous rider. No? Okay. That's what I thought he was doing. That's what I would have done. Um, I could just play a big creature with that's a little bit harder to target, make it hard for his guy to be very impactful. Um, he also could just be resurrecting stuff and wanting more value off the resurrect. Um, that would leave three mana. So we could do Bloodline Protector and Icon of Ancestry, or we could play just Burly Breaker, which is like a very boring thing, but it is a werewolf. We get one more of them out, like Hound Tamer, and then we get Tovalar to start triggering. Um, I am going to do the greedy thing and swing because I do want a card. If I wasn't incentivized by a card here, I definitely would not be doing this. But the fact that I get to draw a card off of that. We get our Night Pack Ambusher, which is pretty good. Um, looking at the amount of mana he has to spend, you know, it's four. So he, he definitely can board wipe still. Um, and then he's left with a 5-3, and we can't really do much about that. But I'm just hoping he does not think that's enough value to board wipe. Although I think we're getting to that point where it is. And the fact that he's doing this tells me that he's about to board wipe, uh, which means I should have targeted the Grim Initiate, even though I, I, you know, I did save myself one damage. But in this this way, I mean, I guess he can't resurrect it now. Um, but it, when he board wipes, he's going to get his one one zombie. Yep. 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 Yeah, I, sh I definitely should have blocked that thing, because then the 1-1 one, one zombie would be out, it would have died to the board wipe. And then he has some graveyard. So this is just a sack deck. It's kind of interesting. Um, I really don't have anything I can do against his 5-3. Um, at all. So, we are simply going to play a Bloodline Protector, naming Were Werewolf. And then we're going to follow that up with a Hound Tamer, which will ETB and put a counter on Bloodline Pretender, meaning that they can block this ground, guys. We just have to be worried about Orcus up in the air. Um, then next turn, I guess we play Tovalar. Um, okay. So next turn, he might actually just... Oh, he's drawing cards. Okay. Yep, the Locket. Sack it. Cool. Yep, yep, yep. He really needs some removal. I mean, I'm just going to play this guy, hope he doesn't get removed, and then just have a ton of mana next turn. It's a very greedy play. Um, well, I don't have any protection up for it, but I'm kind of just hoping. He did just draw two cards, uh, but looking at his ratio of removal, it's actually not incredibly high. I mean, we have like three removal-ish spells. Two of them are only two of them really are, so it's not bad. Um, but the hovering makes me worried. <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then, yeah, um, not expecting this game to go well, and so now we need to either draw removal or just concede. Now we need to draw two pieces of removal or concede. Uh, 
I mean, that's removal, but not for the right thing. So, yeah, I mean, we end up losing. That's fine. Um, you win some, you lose some. Either way, let's swing concede. This has been fun. Let me know what you guys think about Midnight Hunt and what decks you guys have been playing in the comments down below. If you enjoyed and want to see more videos like this, hit that like button. I will see you in the next one. Bye.